Hi readers, I'm Lauren Tarshes, and I am so excited to take you behind the scenes of my latest article, This is the End of Chicago. It tells the story of the Great Chicago Fire, which blazed through the city of Chicago in 1871. One third of the city was burned to the ground. 300 people were killed and 100,000 others were left homeless. It was one of the most devastating fires in U.S. history. But it was also the beginning of an incredible story of rebirth. In the 10 years after the fire, Chicago was completely rebuilt. Today, it's the third largest city in America. I knew this story of a city rising from the ashes was one that I had to share with you. This October is the 150th anniversary of the Great Chicago Fire, and it seemed to me the perfect opportunity to write a new article about this. I've actually been dying to write an article about the Chicago Fire ever since I wrote my I Survived book about this same topic a few years ago. Writing that book took months of research. I read many books. I combed through news articles from the time of the fire. I even flew to Chicago, where I visited museums, snooped through dusty libraries, and interviewed experts. But for this new article, there would be new research challenges. My I Survive book was historical fiction, which means that although all the facts were true, the characters were from my imagination. My article would be narrative nonfiction, an exciting story that is completely true. That meant I would have to find a real kid as the main character. There was just one problem. The Chicago fire happened 150 years ago. Nobody who experienced that event is still alive today. So I would have to turn to primary sources, materials like letters, diary entries, memoirs, and photos that were created during the time of the fire. Doing this kind of research often makes me feel like a detective piecing through clues to a mystery. In the book, Chicago's Great Fire, I had read about a 13-year-old fire survivor named Bessie Bradwell but there were just a few lines about her in the book. To put Bessie in the center of my article, I would need much more than that. Details about what she saw, heard, felt, smelled, and experienced on that frightening night. So I flipped to the book's bibliography where the author listed the sources he had used. And that's where I found the missing piece of the puzzle a link to a detailed primary source account Bessie had written about her harrowing journey through the burning city. It was like a snowstorm, she remembered, only the flakes were red instead of white. As you read my article, think about which details might have come from Bessie's memoir. Finding a real kid to star in my story was challenging, but I was lucky. Sources about the Chicago fire have been carefully preserved over the past 150 years. That's because people from Chicago are determined that the disaster not be forgotten. If you visit Chicago today, you will find a monument to the fire near the spot where it first started you'll see a diorama of the burning city in the Chicago History Museum. You'll see buildings labeled as fire landmarks. The city's professional soccer team is even named after the Chicago fire. Why would the people of Chicago want to keep the memory of that terrible night alive? Because by remembering the fire, they're also remembering the incredible recovery that happened afterwards. Even before the ruins of the fire had finally been cleared away, survivors had begun putting up new homes, shops, and streetcar tracks. Within 10 years, the city was even more dazzling than before. 
And so the story of the Great Chicago Fire isn't just the story of a disaster. It's really the story of incredible human resilience, strength, and courage. And I really hope that that shines through as you read my article.